Filtering in Swift data is done with predicates, a test we write that's applied to every object in our model data coming through, and those that pass the test are included in the resulting array. Now in Swift data, filtering is done with a hash predicate macro, which converts our Swift code into special filters that can be run on the underlying database. Now, if you've used core data before, this hash predicate macro is equivalent to NS predicate, but it has differences. The main one being it's type checked, it's checked at compile time to make sure the code is sensible. However, it's not perfect. There's no equivalent to NS compound predicate, for example. Anyway, let's try a few simple predicates here in our destination listing view. Uh, here is our current initializer code uh, here. Boom, with the sort right now, we're going to modify this so it has a predicate attached to it. For example, we might say we've got a filter here using hash predicate. We might say that uh, we want to only show destinations that have a priority greater than or equal to two. So we'd say $0 dot priority is greater equal to two. That is one example object here from our data. So you can see we're giving this hash predicate thing this closure of code to work with. That will take one object from the query and apply the test to it. Does this thing have a priority equal to or greater than two? If it does, it's included. If it doesn't, it's excluded. Or we could say, uh, write a predicate that only shows destinations that are upcoming in our trip. They haven't passed already. Now we're ignoring those older than now as the goal here, but we can't just read date.now inside a predicate. It's not allowed, because it's external. But if we get a local copy of the data first, we can read it correctly. So in our initializer, if we say let now equals date.now, we can read this now value inside our predicate. We could say $0.date is greater than now. It's an upcoming destination. Now these are both interesting and useful in their own way, but in this project, we'll use our predicate to let the user search for specific things using SwiftUI's searchable modifier. This will change as the app is running, of course. They'll type things in, and that means specifying a dynamic filter. That's exactly the same way as specifying a dynamic sort thing. We pass the value into the initializer from content view and then modify the query inside here. This takes four steps, starting with some new state inside content view to track whatever the user's typing right now. So we'll say up here, at state, private var, search text is an empty string. We're then going to bind that to Swift UI's searchable modifier. So we have nav title and destination here. I'm going to say dot searchable text of dollar search text. Show the search bar and put the type into that string here. Third, we're going to update the initializer of our listing view to accept the search string, then use it for our query predicate. So our listing view here. Here's our uh, predicate. Let's get rid of date.now. We'll say, take a sort, but also take a search string, like that. And inside here, we're going to say, if our search string is empty, then just show all objects. Return true. Otherwise, return does that object's name have a localized standard contain of our search string, like that. Now this thing, localized standard contains, is almost always the best way to do user-facing string checks in Swift. It uh, takes care of case, it's case sensitive, takes care of diacritics and more automatically. It just takes care of all things user cared about. They type Rome, doesn't matter how it's typed, it'll match it here. Finally, we're going to change the way we make our listing view from content view. So it passes in both the current sort order and that search string from the searchable modifier. So in content view, here's where we make the view. Sort order here. We'll say search string is our search text like that. Hopefully now we have dynamic filtering in place. Let's press command R and find out. Oops, I got oh, value missing, of course, my preview. Well, that's easy enough. Search string of 
empty string. <laughs> that makes sense. There we go. Try again. Okay, so you can see we have Capri, Naples, Rome, and Verona. If I search for A, there's no A in Rome, so it's gone away. If I do AP, Capri and Naples still match. If I do APR, only Capri matches. Notice how it's got a capital A here. Doesn't matter, lowercase here, it's case insensitive automatic.